Hello again, brothers and sisters in Christ. Okay, I found that message that I was talking about. It is still Friday, August the 14th, and right now it is 11.26 a.m. And hopefully I'll get down for a nap by noon. <laughs> I have to try to lie down or else in the evening I'm just like a, like a, a snail. <laughs> I don't know, a slug, whatever they call it. I just, don't, you know, I don't have any energy. So anyway, enough of that. This is so important. And this is on I am calling you now blogspot.com for those of you who want to go to the so the source okay and read it for yourself all right it's called it was put up on friday may the 1st of 2020 um uh, and it's called powerful will you be transformed first or left behind to endure the tribulation now note it's the tribulation not the wrath of god for it is not appointed unto man, it is not appointed unto his church to suffer the wrath of God. Okay, so you have another chance to get your act together. Forgive whoever you're not forgiving. Love God most, more than your children, more than your career, more than your video games, whatever is your problem, okay? Now, let me read this. Dear family in Yahushua. Oh, I got a sweet baby right here laying right next to my leg. He's tired. He's saying, Mama, it's time for a nap. <sighs> yeah, we'll take a nap in just a few more minutes, okay? Oh, he loves to take a nap with me. All right. Dear family in Yahushua, I am truly honored and humbled beyond words. To continue to bring Father's messages to you in these urgent times. I never know which message will be the last one posted. As we know, we will not always have the internet available like we do now. All praise to Yahushua, our King, for who He is what he provides for us and his great counsel and wisdom as the days of man end and we prepare for his glorious coming hallelujah the king is coming message received the week of april 24th to the 30th 2020 my children I want to give further revelation to my disciples of the difference between those I will come to transform first and those who will remain on the earth to continue in their maturity before my second coming. This day is rapidly approaching and many do not understand the separation that will be made as it has been foretold in my word. See, it is biblical. In my word, you read of three of the seven feasts in Israel that spiritually represent three groups of people on earth. The feasts are Pesach or Passover, Shavuot or Pentecost, and Sukkot, which is Tabernacles. I will show you how these feasts and what they depict parallel different levels of maturing, which can also be said of my people. You see the importance of that? Okay, that was me adding that in. The barley. I feel like there's something on my mouth, but I don't feel it. Excuse me, sorry. I need some lip gloss, maybe. Okay. The barley feast at Passover represents my overcomers those whom I will transform first 
as this parallels the first yearly crop to be harvested in Israel. This barley crop or overcomer group have acquired the maturity needed in order to be prepared for the first resurrection. The main body of the church will not develop this maturity until later. The wind, or my Holy Spirit, blows upon the overcomers, and the chaff, or sin in their life, is immediately exposed and repented of, allowing this group to mature ahead of the second group, or wheat, which is the church. The overcomers are extremely sensitive to the move of my, my spirit and have learned to hear the voice of their shepherd clearly. My overcomers are held to a higher accountability as they have been in convicted and fully disciplined and have surrendered earlier in their journey with me than those who have not yet learned to overcome. These first fruits place me as their first love over everything. Amen to that. The overcomers have also learned not to instantly react to a situation, but rather take a step back and ask my Holy Spirit how to respond in love. I've taught you always to ask me to show you what the most loving response is that you can have in any situation. Are we all perfect? Pause. Are we all perfect at this? No, I'm not. And but 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 like you said in the paragraph before, the Holy Spirit, we're sensitive to the Holy Spirit coming by and saying, "You messed up. Repent of that, and I will repent of it quickly." Okay, let me move on. There is a maturity in learning to respond in love especially to those who have hurt you. I teach in my word that you are not to react with fruits of the flesh, but instead respond in the fruits of the Spirit. Overcomers are most often very aware of their thoughts, words, and actions and strive to have a fruitful response that reflects me. This differs from those who carry on with strife, envy, gossip, idle talking and conversation, and those who are not sensitive to my Holy Spirit. I teach that engaging in the things of the flesh and of the world is sin, that produces death when not repented for. And I have called you to come out of the world and be separate or set apart. There are several references in my word for the overcomers. They are known as my first fruits, sons of God, 144,000 my elect, my heirs, and those who are the wise virgins who have attained the extra oil that I require in order to qualify for the first transformation. They are called unblemished before the throne, those who will rise in the first resurrection, and those who will be my kings and priests. They are jewels in my crown. They will rule and reign with me for a thousand years. 
and be saved from the lake of fire, taking part in the judgment of the two remaining groups. My first fruits are called to a life of brokenness. They often experience hardship and betrayal, and they are those called to suffer alongside of me in order that they receive the crown of life. They do not spend their lives in comfort. Many suffer infirmities and afflictions of all kinds, whether it be physical or otherwise. They are called to surrender all they know in this life, and they understand that this is for an outcome that I have ordained. They despair and lie in brokenness here in order that self would be overcome and my glory would be revealed in and through them. They suffer for me to prove the genuineness of their great faith. They have been called to carry about in their bodies my death so that my life can be revealed in them. Haven't I spoken before that you are to live a crucified life but display a glorified one? I am the first fruits of them that slept so are also my overcomers of the first resurrection, the first fruits of others yet to come. Pause. I don't really understand what he means calling us of the first resurrection, like as if we die and then are resurrected. But I... I'm not going to let that keep me from believing this is of the Lord because it all it all is confirmation of what has come along since and what I got before and others, many others also. All right, I'll move on. Just as I was of no reputation, my first fruits are not highly esteemed here on the earth. Boy, that's for sure. They do not come to make friends and are most often not accepted by the world and others. They have come to save souls through their example and demonstration of me fully alive and manifesting in them. Their journey is one of isolation in the wilderness and many times they live as outcasts, misfits, and loners, because the world does not love them and misunderstands them. This is because they are not of this world. But I was not of this world. It is not our home. I have separated them out first in order that they be trained to lead in the greater, larger harvest. There is an ordained time for my first coming as groom for my bride, and because of the fiery trials, my first fruits have overcome. Before that point, they are the first group to fully mature in me, allowing my presence to completely govern them. This early maturing qualifies them as leaders. Oh, praise be unto you, Lord Jesus Christ. My overcomers do not consider themselves righteous because they know the wickedness of their own heart better than most. Oh, Lord, that is so true. I feel so not worthy of this position. I, You all know all the mistakes I make, and I, I just think, well, I'm in this imperfect body and my brain is assaulted by stupid vaccines. And anyway, it's not about me. Let's continue on with the word from the Lord. 
This is how I have molded them more and more into my image, giving them wisdom, counsel, and revelation from my kingdom. An overcomer will sin less as they are walking in closer harmony with my Holy Spirit and repent daily, even several times a day, being quick to take thought captive and rebuke enemy spirits and their sinful nature. See, we're not perfect. We still sin. We still have a sinful nature. But we're sensitive to the Holy Spirit to, to rebuke demons and repent and so on. This is so true. Okay. Their discernment is refined and they walk in obedience and with great discipline regularly. They are extremely conscientious and attuned to my Holy Spirit. My first fruits do not engage in ungodly activities or worldly affairs unnecessarily or intentionally. They are very careful of the company in which they keep. They do not watch, read, or listen to things that I find offensive. They call what is holy, holy, and what is evil, evil. Unlike what the world does today, they are not afraid to stand for truth, no matter the cost, and for many the cost has been everything, for there is always a great price to pay for this degree of surrender and obedience to me. Boy, howdy, that's the truth. This group wants nothing of this world because they walk in the promises I have made and know they are only here for my purposes and for such a short time before I bring them home. The second crop harvested in Israel happens around Pentecost or Shavuot. This feast is the wheat harvest and represents the church, those who will not be fully prepared to meet me, their groom, when I appear for my first fruits. Wait a minute, let me read that over. This feast is the wheat harvest, and represents the church, those who will not be fully prepared to meet me, their groom, when I appear for my first fruits. Their lamps are not completely full of oil, but yet they are still saved from eternal damnation. These children believe in me. They are saved and call me their Messiah, but they require a greater threshing by trials in order that they are spiritually prepared to meet me. This group is what is often called, quote, the left behind group. The threshing or judgment that they will be left to endure must be harsher, just as wheat must be threshed to separate out the chaff. However, this will bring about a great purification and ensure that they are ready to meet me at my second coming. This second larger group often comprises in life in various ways. Compr oh, I'm sorry. I thought that didn't sound like I said enough syllables. This second larger group often compromises in life, in various ways, never fully committing their hearts and lives to me. I love all my people the same, but this group does not believe in walking in complete obedience and is therefore not ready to meet me at the time of the first translation. See, there he calls it translation, not resurrection. This group 
will require greater sanctification in order to be spiritually prepared. These believers do good things, but they but are those referred to in my word as the foolish virgins who do not have extra oil at the time of my first appearing as groom. And then the door shuts. They are often lukewarm and non-committal, lacking discipline and strong conviction of faith. These souls are justified by faith but have not fully submitted to my sanctification process. In order to put on my complete nature, more correction is necessary. These will receive judgment according to their works and the level of spiritual preparation they have attained. My judgments will purge them of any lawlessness left in their lives. And this group will be left to endure the great tribulation, either fleeing for their lives from the mark of the beast or being martyred for my name's sake. Okay. Fleeing for their lives. Well, remember, we'll be down here on earth. God's putting us back to help. He doesn't give the whole picture in every message. Remember that. My children, this day is so very close to its fulfillment. If you are not fully indwelled by my Holy Spirit, baptized by fire, born again, and living in obedience, then you have not learned to love that which I love and hate that which I hate. Operating this way shows lack of discernment of good and evil. I have taught you in my word about things unacceptable to me. To not rid these things in your life is sin. If you truly love me with all your heart, mind, and soul, you would do as I command and not accept the ways of the world. Since the eyes are the window of the soul, nothing unclean would enter your eyes or your ears, and you would be convicted by things that are sinister and dark. Watching, reading, or listening to things concerning fornication, lust, homosexuality, murder, idolatry, profanity, all the many things that flood your world today, these would all be offensive to you as they are to me. This is why this second group will not be ready when I, your groom, comes for his first fruits. Do you now see? Do you see now why there must be a separation? For I will only come for a pure and spotless bride, my church one without blemish who has washed her robes and made herself ready. Excuse me. This is a long one. Pray earnestly on these words because the outcome of ignoring them is so very serious. The third or the last or third group of people reflected in my Feast of Tabernacles is the grape harvest. That's exactly what he told me. There's a barley harvest, a wheat harvest, and a grape harvest. This group is made up of those who must be trodden underfoot. Grapes, when harvested, have a very tough skin 
and therefore must be crushed in order to obtain the wine. This group will receive the most severe form of punt of judgment, as they are the unbelievers, the whoremongers, the sexually immoral, the murderers, the sorcerers, and liars. They will have their part in the lake that burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Blessed are they that enter the first resurrection. Wow. My people, I love you beyond measure, and I wish that none would perish. Who do you call master and king over your life? To whom do you give your allegiance? Are you in covenant with the king of darkness or the one and only king of all creation and your father? If these words here I have spoken have convicted you, then please repent now and turn to me, seek my heart with every fiber of your being. Call to me, and I will answer you. I will never turn my back on those who cry to me with everything. Those who are willing to fulfill, oh, I'm sorry, fully submit to me. It is still not too late, but in an instant, it will be. Your groom approaches quickly. Which side of the door will you find yourself on when I come knocking to take you with me? Will you then beg the other wise virgins to give you their oil so that you may be full? I tell you, it will not be, and you will remain to endure. Study my word. It is all there for you to uncover. I am your teacher, your counselor. Wisdom is given to those who ask in earnest and sincerity. As you can plainly see, the judgments have already begun and the severity will increase rapidly. The midnight hour is here. All commences. Please, please make me first in your life if you have not already done so. I love each of you beyond measure. Yahushua. And there are many scriptures below that one. So. I suggest that if you do not know that you are in the first group, that you get yourself there by getting on your face and repenting of everything you can think of, calling upon the name of the Lord to fill you fully with His Holy Spirit, and you will manifest speaking in tongues. Some people say, no, no, not necessarily. Well, maybe not that day. But if you... Feel the infilling you should manifest. And you have to be careful who you let lay hands on you to do this because you could end up getting a kundalini spirit. The devil has people out there full of the kundalini spirit just anxious and ready to lay their hands on whoever will let them so they can speak in tongues and and they'll act all kind of goofy when they do it and that is not of the holy spirit the holy spirit allows self-control you can stop it at will and you don't laugh your head off and fall on the ground and roll around giggling like a child in grade school that is of that's the kundalini spirit now i have been slain in the spirit i have had had pastors uh, lay their hands on me and pray and I you just go back real gently and you lay there and you just praise the Lord you're just so filled with the Holy Spirit you're just your body's unable to hold itself up 
And that's not the same thing as collapsing and then rolling around, laughing your head off and being silly and being all out of control, like you can't help it. That That's not the Holy Spirit. Just wanted to throw that in. So I'm going to plead the blood of Jesus over this video and the internet connection, over myself and my computer, and over each and every one of you, and your computers, your or devices, and your internet connections, and may all, we all get to meet any day now in the air when Jesus comes for us, his first fruits, the barley harvest. And praise be unto the Lord, our Savior, Jesus Christ, for his faithful messengers that he can trust to give these messages to. God bless Julie Wedby and this message. And may it fall in your heart, not on deaf ears. Bye for now. I'll talk to you later.